Okay, so last talk in this session by Mauro about Map Store. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you can present your own better <laughs> than I can do it. Thank you very much, Dave. So uh, we are going to switch a little bit uh, the topic. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, the other side of the moon. We, you have seen probably many, many presentation about server-side software. Now we are switching a little bit to front-end. I work for G-Solutions, but maybe you already heard of us during these days, especially if you follow the Andrea's presentations. So what I'm going to talk about today, uh, first of all, I will try to explain what is MapStore for the few of you who didn't heard about this wonderful product yet. And then I will try to show you what we did last year on the product, and then what we want to do next year and in the future in general about MapStore. So what is MapStore? This is the website, so if you want to leave now and don't want to follow my presentation, just go to the website and you will find any possible information. But if you want to hear something directly from me, so MapStore is uh, two different things. The first one is its framework aspect. So it's sort of a library that you can use to build web GIS and mapping applications. If you think of Leaflet, OpenLayers, Mapbox, GL, those are libraries that allow building mapping applications too, but I would say they are sort of low-level libraries, while MapStore tries to be something on a higher level that uses all those libraries, but adds more uh, widgets and tools that allow to do complex things in a simple way. So since it's a framework, if you are a developer and you want to use it to develop your own application, you need some basic knowledge on the technologies that MapStore uses. Here you find a list of the most important ones, in particular React.js and Redux. But if you are not a developer and you also want to develop an application, you can ask for someone else to develop it for you, like us. We are a company that develops using Mapstore, so we are available to build application with Mapstore for you. And also, if you are familiar with our technologies and you would like to contribute and to use Mapstore, or you would like to change your job, just send your resume because we are always looking for new developers to grow our team. But then there is uh, the second life of MapStore as a product. So if you are not a developer and you just need something to publish your own maps, you want, don't want to write or you are not able to write a single line of code, you can use MapStore too because it's a complete product by itself. You can use it as it is. It's open source, completely open source, so you can just download it from our GitHub repository, get the final binary package and install it and just use it. Or you can customize it a little bit without being a developer, just editing some configuration file or even using our administrative UI in some cases. Okay, now, what did we do last year? What are the new fancy features of MapStore that we worked on on the last 12 months? This is a short list. We worked a lot on uh, dimensions handling, in particular time, so we had the ability to work with time in a very simple way for your WMS or WFS data. And uh, since we were there, we also we are also advertising the ability to work with other dimensions like elevation. We also worked on projections. Projections were supported by MapStore from uh, the first uh, implementation, but uh, they were not advertised a lot because working pro we pro with projection, we will see, is a little bit hard. So just recently, we exposed this kind of functionality to the final user. 
and we will see how it works. Then we also worked on the annotation, so the ability to draw on a map and store your personal notes on a public, publicly available map. And another couple of things, the two main ones are the Geonode integration. If you know about Geonode, you also may know that it has a mapping component for a lot of functionalities like composing your maps or just navigating them. We uh, are offering now an alternative using Map Store to the standard mapping capabilities of Geonode. So the ability to replace the basic functionalities with, with another implementation done with Map Store. We are also working on styling. It seems that styling is a new thing this year. So we all are also working on a styler. Um, the, most, the other important things I would like to mention is documentation because this is becoming important. And this is the first year I can say we have some documentation. Last year I, I had to say we are working on this year. I can say we have one. OK, let's start. So with the, the first topic that are dimension, uh, in Map Store, you have the ability to work with the WMS layer published by GeoServer or any other OGC WMS service that supports dimensions and work with elevation. So you can filter using the elevation dimension and see your data moving a sort of slider to change the current one. You can also use elevation for other purposes, for example, to have um, position together with the elevation as you move in the map, and also in the 3D mode, because Map Store also has a 3D mode using CISM.js, you can use uh, uh, elevation data to build your own terrain model using your dam, together with your server, in this case, that has a plugin for publishing elevation data compatible with the CISM.js format. We also have a new and fancy time slider, complete time slider that you can use with WMS time-enabled data to do all sorts of things like just moving on time, doing range searches and filters, and also playing animations with your time-enabled data. It requires uh, currently a, an extension of your server to work completely. It's called the WMTS multi-dimension plugin. With this plugin, you get all the functionality. Without, uh, you get only limited one. So I suggest to include it in your your server configuration. This is just a quick example of what we did with the time sliders, so showing meteorites data along the years. Then, uh, talking about projection, what if the world is flat? I put this slide just to, as a desire, because projection usually are complex things to handle, so maybe it would be better if just the, the art was simply flat. But unfortunately, it is not. And we have to make the world flat for our purposes, at least 90% uh, of the time when we want a two-dimensional map instead of using a globe like the Cesium JS one. So we have to deal with projection. And the other problem is that uh, humanity invented a lot of dim term pro projection and used a lot of them during the years. So we have to handle a very wide range of different algorithms and projection types. And this is not very easy. This is the reason why we are exposing this kind of functionality just now, because a lot of projections exist and they are all different and have different kind of issues. There are a lot of libraries, both on the server and on the client side, to work with projection to convert coordinates between one projection and the other. In particular, for JavaScript, we have proj 4 js that is the equivalent of proj 4 in the backend world. Also, OpenLayers is well integrated with these kind of libraries. 
We also have backends like GeoServer that can work with many different projections, but anytime you choose to go with a different one than the usual Web Mercator or even WGS84, prepare for some pain and prepare to work a lot to make your different projection work. For now, you can start using them. In uh, Map Story, it's very easy to add a new projection just uh, using the usual project definition that you can find on the web very easily. So you can define your own projection, even ones that are not officially listed with an APSG code eventually. And then you can apply the usage of your projection to a list of tools that support them. In particular, we implemented a new selector that allows to switch between different projections directly from your application. This is the first one that I want to show. And then also other tools that can show coordinates, for example, the mouse position one that shows the current position when you move using the mouse, can show coordinates in different coordinate systems, so you can enable your preferred one also in this case. Good. Then another mm, important tool that we introduced recently are map annotations. So the ability for the final user to draw something on a map and save it for later usage. In the first implementation, we just supported points with symbols. Uh, now we support a lot of uh, geometry types, in particular polylines, polygons, circles, and also text that you can put on a map. And we are also working on a style editor. Styling options existed from the beginning in Mapstore, but were very limited. In particular, we have a simple styler for vector data that we imported in the client, and the ability to switch between server-side styles coming from GeoServer or other WMS services. And this is the basic functionality that we still have. But we also had the capability to edit styles in a similar way to what GeoStyler is uh, trying to do. The workflow usually starts from uh, the ability to select uh, some sample template styles so that you can start from something that is already part of what you need. Then you can use a simple text editor with some helper functionality like syntax highlighting, autocomplete, uh, and some tools like color pickers and stuff like that. This is the second uh, styler that we are, have introduced, and all of this is already available in the current release of Mapstore. And then we will see what we are going to do in the future. Uh, just to mention that this styler works uh, in uh, two different ways. It can work to edit server-side styles, so it can save your style on GeoServer using the GeoServer REST API, so you can edit your styles directly for GeoServer, or it can be used also for client-side rendering for vector styles and similar technologies. And then we have another couple of tools that we are introducing, like for widgets and dashboards, we introduce a widget tray so that you can expand and minimize all the widgets that are available on a map. We also added the ability to do persisted filters. Uh, it was always available uh, the function to filter your data both uh, on the map, so using WMS or on a attribute table view using WFS filters or CQL filters with a visual composer like this one. Now this functionality can also be persisted, so you can basically create a sort of SQL views directly on the client, applying a particular filter that is always used by the layer. Then we worked on the Geonode integration, so from version 2.10 of Geonode, you have the ability to switch the mapping engine to use MapStore instead of the standard one with a simple, very simple configuration. And MapStore in this case is used in a 
a lot of places with different uh, UIs, obviously, because it depends on what you use it for. For example, for map previews, we have a very simple interface with just navigation tools and the ability to print the preview, while when you want to use it for managing and editing your data, you also have the complete attribute editor using WFST, as in this example. We also have the time slider functionality for time-enabled data, WMS in, in GeoNode 2, and the styler is also available for GeoNode. So all these improvements that went into the GeoNode integration are also available in the main product. And this is an example of collaboration between projects. So the styler, the time slider were done basically because uh, they were available in the old mapping engine for GeoNode. So if we wanted to replace it with MapStore, we need to implement those kind of widgets. But now they are only available, not only on GeoNode, but also for generic MapStore users. We also have charts and widgets in the GeoNode integration. And finally, we also have a new documentation website that you can consult. Uh, there is both a user guide, so for the final users that are going to use the product, and a developer guide for those who want to build their own WebGIS application using the Map Store SDK. So for the future, what we are going to do from tomorrow? We want to improve the time and elevation support. In particular, the time slider will be able to work also without the WMTS multi-dimension extension because time dimension is supported by WMS by itself. So it's, uh, the extension is only needed for advanced functionality, but for Basic, we wanted to use it without the plugin. And also for elevation, we would like to introduce the elevation profiles capability. The style editor will uh, include also a visual editor, because for now we only have a text editor. And we are evaluating some of the GeoStyler pieces to work also in Map Store. In particular, we are currently working with the style converters that are good also for, for our implementation because uh, basically the style editor was born because of some prototypes we did for the vector tiling work with, together with OGC. So we are moving out from the prototype phase now and we are going to implement uh, the real functionality in our product. So this is the time we are looking for the, the uh, technology we want to use. Uh, I think we, we will ask for collaboration with GeoStyler to improve uh, the parsers because they, are, they have a good infrastructure to convert uh, style from one format to another. They need to be completed, obviously, because there are some missing parts and we, we would like to work together to do these kind of things, for sure. And we will see also for, for the UI how the things goes eventually. But for sure, we would like to uh, collaborate on the converters, at least. We are also working on vector ties. I already mentioned that. In particular, we are implementing support for different sources for this kind of data, like WMS, WMTS, WFS3 also, if it's mostly died, uh, replaced by another protocol from uh, OGC. And we also support uh, the map box vector tile format and other ones supported by the libraries. For the styling, we would like to be, uh, let's say, styling uh, independent, so to support the different uh, languages as GeoStyler does. This is the reason why we are trying to use the converters also in, in our product, so that the user will be able to use styles in different languages like SLD, CSS, map box, uh, eventually others, and to switch uh, seamlessly between server-side rendering and client-side rendering. This is the target of our prototypes, so we are going to move them also to production. And finally, we, are, we started to build a different thing that you probably uh, see from uh, other vendors. There is a, an ESRI product that is very similar, it's called GeoStory. Uh, 
And we are trying to build something similar with, uh, with Mapstorm. Not we are trying, we are building, we are implementing it right now, so it will probably out uh, first quarter of 2020. It's a different way to use maps to tell a story, not just to show some information. Storytelling. And we will also work to improve all the things that we did last year with bug fixing and similar. Here you can find our documentation and other resources related to the project. And that's all. Any question? Thank you. One over there. Hi. Hi. Uh, since Mobster is a very nice front end for the data published via GeoServer, and since you're doing a lot of work integrating the two, I mean, Mobster and GeoServer, yep. I've seen a lot of things from GeoFence that you presented previously about how you can have fine control over data and which groups, which roles can see which geographic extent or whatever. Yes. Um, if you integrate the two, is this still available? Can you still use GeoFence if you, if you integrate strongly MapStore and GeoServer? Yes, we also have a, an optional plugin that is a UI to GeoFence, so you can control your rules, uh, the accessibility of your data directly from MapStore. So it's all integrated. Uh, another target for MapStore is to be a simplified uh, interface for a complete infrastructure. So if you have GeoServer, GeoFence, and a lot of pieces that you have to control and administer, we would like MapStore to be a central point, at least for the most simple operations. So a center of control for an administrator too, to publish your data, to control security, and stuff like that. We already have a tight integration between the security of MapStore and GeoServer that can be implemented very easily. And also GeoFence is a piece that can be used together in a very transparent way. So, so what is the plugin called for MapStore? It's the, uh, I think it's uh, rules. Uh, I can send you the exact name because I don't remember okay, thanks. The, exactly the name. Just more a matter of understanding. Uh, you do map store. I see Emmanuel from camp to camp. They do Geocastra. Ge we have something similar at Terrestrius. We call it Chagoon. Uh, how is it configured? Is it so you have your bunch of JavaScript or whatever files, and then you have configuration files? We have, uh, we have uh, some JSON configuration files. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the main one is uh, can be changed at run times, so yeah. every uh, detail can be can be changed by a, a JSON file where you can also configure the UI because MapStory is based on the concept of assembling different plugins. So each plugin is a module by itself that gives you a complete functionality and can eventually integrate with other plugins. Through the configuration file, you can configure from the basic aspects like which plugins I want in my in my application yeah. to uh, which services I want to use. And then some things are instead interactive, like the map configuration that you store are done interactively directly inside MapStore and saved on a, on a database, basically. OK. So out of one installation, you can have several maps? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. OK. Time for coffee. I think it is. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye.